All right, well, uh, I think I've pressed all the right buttons and I'm good to go. Well, um, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to, as the slide says, Organisational Skills for Modern Leaders. Uh, this is a, a repeat of a talk I did at the Leadership Conference, and I'm so grateful to be able to do this uh, here for Golden Key members. Um, I want to just give you an outline of what the agenda is for today so that we can um, know what to expect and know when to start debating with me when I get stuff wrong. Uh, so uh, before actually I get started, um, what, what degrees do we have in here? I know multimedia. Any other multimedia? No. Okay, what else do we have? Business. Uh, business? Any other business people? One business person, cool. Mm -hmm. Organisation, modern leaders, other mm -hmm. resonate with you guys. Projecting, honest, and journalism. Journalism, excellent. Okay, so keeping on some of the things in organisation is an important thing, that's cool. Social work. Social work? Uh, dentistry. Dentistry, unreal, <laughs> cool. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> medicine. Psychology. Psychology, excellent, don't, don't read my thought. And <laughs> pharmacy only. Pharmacy only. Okay, cool. Um, all right, I'll give you an introduction about me, but I just wanted to sort of gauge where, where we all are. All right, so to open, um, I want to talk about who I am and why I'm the person standing in front of you. That's kind of a cool thing. And then specifically why technology, just as an opening to make sure we're all on the same page. And is it important? I think that second question is a bit silly, but uh, the first one, you don't know who I am. Second is actually the content of what I wanted to display. Um, when I did this at leadership conference, we focused a lot on this because everyone really loved it. So I kind of jazzed it up based on a little bit of feedback and then I'll jump into social networks so you can find out all about me personally. And then finally, uh, I want to I have a bit of debate. And I actually want to save like the last 15 minutes or so to have question and answer time. Um, I don't have uh, perfect answers for everything. This just works for me. So this will be highly opinionated, okay? Um, I will say things uh, that might get people a little bit funny, like um, you should have a smartphone, you should have a Facebook account. I'm going to say um, things that like, everyone will have opinions on. Um, I'll say things like Apple is better than Android, and, and whatever, whatever stance you have. Um, uh, I don't really care until this part. Okay, cool. Um, so let's, let's get started with the opening. So hello, my name is uh, Smiley Rob. Um, that's short for Robert J. Chatfield. J stands for John. Not that any of that matters. And uh, I am a Bachelor of IT student doing Accelerated. I did the math when I did this at Leadership Conference and I'll be completing 240 credit points in 22 months. So I like high pace. Uh, and it's not just academic stuff that I'm working on. I'm actually uh, I try and say yes to everything that I get a chance to say yes to, and uh, it means a lot to me to get the most out of, out of every day. And, uh, and before I started at uni, as you saw, I was 27, um, I've worked at a, a bunch of awesome tech companies that, that range from 30 people to 75,000 people to Griffith and, and the organisational structure of Griffith. Uh, say no more, and then a, an awesome organisation called Atlassian, which is voted number one place to work in Australia, and I get the opportunity to work there uh, in January after I graduate. So I, I say all of this just to give you a bit of a, a heads up of, uh, I'm an IT guy, so I'm gonna, I might get a little bit nerdy, that's when question and answers come in, um, and also that I like high pace worlds. So when I'm talking about organisation, I, I want to I want to highlight that I've, I've tested these things and I've had 10,000 emails a week and, oh, that's not realistic, but 1,000 a, a day, definitely, um, at Apple. And, and how do you power through that? What, what do you have to do to stay on top of it all and, um, and, and just what tools can you use to make that a whole lot easy? So, um, as I said before, it will be an opinionated talk. Um, I want to focus on leadership and, and applying these skills to leadership. Um, Organisation, so I could have spoken about calendars, I could have spoken about keyboard shortcuts and using a computer properly. Um, I focused on, on the two things that I'm going to talk about today. Um, communication, communicating effectively. Um, I'm going to talk about mail and, and things. And then finally, I'm talking about technology and specifically I've listed their software, the apps that I like, and, and the cloud. Uh, does anyone not know what that, the cloud is? I put it in talk talk about because it's kind of a play word. Yeah, you, do, you don't know what the cloud is. Okay, so uh, the cloud is, is the internet is, is, is everything. It's kind of a buzzword because it means nothing, really. Uh, it's just the idea that everything, every device that you have, you might have a, a smartphone, you might have a laptop, you might have this computer here, as I started doing my presentation on here. Um, the cloud is the thing that glues that all together. And you shouldn't think any more, any more about that except for that. So um, I do want to talk about all these sorts of things, but 
specifically covering uh, two pieces of content. That is Inbox Zero and social networks. So, let's get started. Has anyone heard of this term before? And I'm glad you've got notepapers in hand. Anyone that's taking notes, having to take notes, because we're going to say some goals here. Um, and I'm not saying anything up there. I am going to have noteworthy things. There's going to be bullet points and stuff that I'd love you to jot down and, and argue later. But sorry, anyone heard of Inbox Zero before? No, 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 no. No? Really? Okay, chill. It's all your lucky day. Um, inbox Zero uh, is, is a concept where you get emails in, and your inbox, your, your challenge is to get your inbox, inbox back to zero, right? Yeah. Uh, it never happens, right? So who has, um, who has zero items in their inbox? No one. Who has uh, 100 items in their inbox? 200? 200? I'm not sure. Not sure, okay. Uh, 500? 1,000? Mm. 10,000? 2,000. 2,000, okay, 2,000 emails. No. Then I get 2,000, um, you know? <laughs> Okay, all right. Um, I asked someone on leadership conference, there's 33,000 emails in the inbox. In the inbox. I had a slight heart palpitation. You're going to see my inbox. I have, I have six different email accounts, and across those, I have 23 emails that are just sitting in my inbox, and that's stressing me out at the moment. So I'm going to do an interactive demo where I'm going to show you how I get that 23 down to zero. I let it buffer for the last like, 24 hours just to um, show you what it's like. But uh, inbox zero is really, really important, and I'm going to show you why. And, oh, and I'm going to show you how to get it to zero, is, is the whole takeaway from today. So this is the, one of the things you're going to jot down. Your inbox is a to-do list that you aim to empty. Okay? Your inbox is a to-do list, and I'm going to focus on this, is a to-do list that you aim to empty. Does that make sense? Right? A to-do list. So by giving your email address, by having an email address, and giving that to someone, you're giving them permission to tell you what to do. Hey Rob, found this cool link, you should watch this video. Boom, that's, that's, that's going to be 20 minutes of my life that he's just told me that I have to give away. And then it's like, hey, would you like to go for coffee? Great, so I've just got now like an hour of my life taken away, or, or committing to or not, right? Or, oh, the numbers are due on Monday, I need the report by Friday, right? Boom, you've got your bosses um, telling you what to do, you've got uni telling you you've got assignments due and surveys to fill out, and, that, and having this, these inboxes are all about other people telling you how you're going to spend your time. Sometimes it's very quick to get rid of them and some, some are a little bit harder, but you want to think of your inbox as a to-do list, as a to-do list that other people have allocated to you. Even if it's just a nice long email from you, your mother, um, it's still an amount of time and a thing on your to-do list that I have to read this, uh, this letter from my mother. Does everyone get that? So I'm going to show you, show you a little bit more. Okay, so, so your inbox is a to-do list that you aim to empty with some snazzy transitions. Okay, so I'm gonna focus on what a to-do list is and how do you do to-do list zero, okay? So not inbox, let's not focus on the inbox for a moment. If you, does anyone use a to-do list like a note, yes, a note app or, or a special app? Um, does anyone have a favorite one, a favorite app at all? Do you, pen and paper, is your favorite app? Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> paper's cool, paper's, paper has its place. Um, a century ago. Um, so, it, like, it, so this, this is going to be five bullet points on how to manage a to-do list. And we're going to apply that to inbox in a tick. So the first one's the easiest. Someone puts something in your uh, inbox, uh, scoop on, sends you an email saying, hey, guess what? Rare deals, 12 o'clock today. You can get 20% off 600 pairs of shoes if you order now. Um, instantly, I delete that. And if I put something on my, um, my to-do list, the easiest thing I can do is delete it. That's, if I could just delete all my emails, I'd be really happy. But obviously that's not the case. So the first step in clearing out your, your inbox is deleting what you don't need, okay? And, and how long does it take to scratch it off? Like half a second. Okay, I'm gonna use that noise. Second, delegate. I wanna do as least of this as possible and I wanna get this back down to zero. You get an, uh, uh, an item that says you have to do a sales report, but you're not the person that does sales report. The sales report man is the person that does that. So what you want to do, do is delegate that task to he, he or she, and then go back to step one and delete it. Does that make sense? Okay, so this is the second way that you can clear out your inbox to get it down to zero, is to delegate tasks that you don't need to do. Third. Now this is specifically to emails, but Having a task like um, 
Uh, my mom just had this long email, and I read it, and there's no action, right? There's no delegating. I'm not going to delegate my mother's email. Um, I'm not going to just delete it, because that would be wrong. But I can respond back. Like, that is just something that can get this out of my, my, my list of things to do, and I can respond back saying, hey, mom, yeah, thinking of you too soon. Uh, she sends this long, I send this long. I send it in a tweet. Um, so this, uh, so you respond straight away, gets it out of the things you have to do. You, you do step one, and you have an empty inbox. Okay, so I'm going to say that delete is like, uh, when it comes to emails, are about half the emails that you're going to get. Delegate might be another 10%. I'm going to say respond is another 10%. Sometimes they just sit there and you, all you have to do is respond and then it's, it's gone. There is no purpose to having it. But some are a little bit complicated. So defer. Right now I'm in a presentation. So every single email is not relevant. I'm not going to reply to any of them in the next hour, so defer is going to be really valuable. Um, everything I'm, in my whole life is going to postpone for an hour because uh, I'm not going to do anything. I'm here with you. Um, and then anyone else in week 13 and stressing about exams and assignments that may be coming up, a lot of personal things need to be deferred um, or brought forward while you procrastinate. But, um, but deferring is, is, is a really big part of, I'm not going to do it now, so let's get it out of the inbox so that that can get back to zero, so I know I have nothing else to do, and I know I'm going to line up when I'm going to do that. I'm going to give you a demo of this one because this is actually the, the big gold bit in, in today's presentation. And then finally, you know, 10, 20 percent of the things you actually have on your list, you have to do. So the report that is yours, the assignment that is yours, the survey that is yours, you actually have to do it before it can leave your inbox. And really, you want to you want to get it down. So there's only two or three things you have to do in your inbox, and all the other things can be deleted, delegated, responded to, or deferred. Does this sound make sense? Okay. So I said that this is to-do lists, and this applies to real to-do lists. But Inbox Zero has slightly different vernacular for, for organizing. So if you delete, you don't have to delete emails anymore, not with Gmail and iCloud and all the cool um, hip new services. So you can just archive it, which basically means move it from my inbox into an invisible box somewhere else called archive. And if I need it back, it's there, but it's definitely not in my inbox. Okay? Delegate, it's just forward. Forward an email. You get an email from a a client that says, uh, I, need, I need these stats on your last report, and it's, and it's a team assignment, so you forward it to the person that can get those stats, and they can reply. So it's not easy, you forward, and then you can archive. Respond is reply, as, as I sort of alluded to before. Number four is defer, which, which I'm going to show you a thing called snooze, which is absolutely incredible. Um, and then finally, do is do. Uh, actually, yeah, actually read the email, actually do the report, actually do work on, on the tasks. Does everyone get these five points? You, use, you start at the top, can I delete it? No. Can I delegate it? Maybe. Can I respond to it immediately and just get rid of it? Maybe. Um, can I defer it, hopefully? And do I just have to do it? And coming back to respond, sometimes uh, at my last company at, at, oh, at, at, at AMX, we had, a, we had to reply to emails within half an hour. So answer phone calls in two rings, reply all emails within half an hour. Some, some were bigger, they needed price lists for, with special pricing that I needed approval for and such. So I'd, I'd do a step three immediately to manage their expectation and then defer it to maybe after lunch because I've got a, a, I had things to do and then actually do it, then archive it. Right, we're just like juggling between these steps. Is this cool? Okay. All right. So I don't know. Cool, this is a good slide for me to segue out of. So I use, so you're probably asking yourself, right? I've never seen a snooze button. I may never have seen an archive button. What are you talking about? So I'm gonna demonstrate an app that I use every day called Mailbox. I got it on my phone about a year ago. Um, it's owned by a company called Dropbox, which you may have heard of before. Cool, getting some head nods from some people. So, um, so I, I use Mailbox every single day. And, uh, and coming soon, so when I did this at Leadership Conference, Mailbox was really the leader in this idea. Um, but last week, Google, you may have heard of them, small tech company, um, announced a thing called Inbox, right? And the whole crux of their thing is your, your inbox is a to-do list that you try to empty. I was just like over the moon. I've registered for it. It's coming soon. It's not out yet, so I can't give you a demo. There, it is available online if you want to have a quick look at the video. Um, but it's all about turning emails into tasks and, and actionable items, which I'm so, like, you, I know I was onto a good thing when, when Google get behind it and make, rewrite Gmail from the ground up. 
to have this feature. So I'm going to give you a quick demo of my, uh, or will I? That'll work. Oh. Now, again, uh, I'll just clear out some of my things because I was doing things earlier today. Um, now, I'm, I'm going to say there's a bit, bit of disclosure. I have personal emails in here, so please don't pay too much attention to the content of my emails, only when I, I ask you to. Um, these are my emails, and you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six different email addresses that people can contact with me. But all in all, I have 28 emails there. That stresses me out. Um, there's little coloured dots here to say that I haven't even read it yet. I'm working on a lot of assignments. Um, I have a lot of push notifications from other places, and I'm just going to try and clear out these using those five steps. Is everyone with me? And try and do this as quickly as possible to show you that you can get your inbox to zero if you try. Um, all right. Um, one, one rule of thumb, someone told me that you should start at the top and go backwards. I don't know. Uh, that's up to you. Um, so here I got an email from a guy called James from LinkedIn. I don't really care. I know it's going to be in LinkedIn. I'm going to check that later. I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut, and I'm going to go and delete that. Right? Go on. Cool. Let's keep moving. Um, and did you see that cute little animation on the top there? It sort of disappears. Um, they have these really cool animations. If I swipe that way, it, it disappears, like as in it's archived. If I swipe this way, I'm going to snooze it. I'll show you that in a tick. All right, so I don't care about this. This is a notification from my server. Hey, did you professional issues, technology? Time to give feedback. I've given my feedback. Done. Right? Like, that was delete. That was step one. I know he's tried to notify me of something. I've done it already. Even though I hadn't read it, I can skim it. I know that's not important. Next. Um, Bitbucket pull request into something. Not important. Uh, this is to do with my assignments and such. I don't care about this. Hey, job opportunity. That's cool. Atlassian's better than that. Um, iTunes. Oh, cool. I like music. What's that? Uh, don't really care. I've already listened to that album. Next. Right? You're seeing I've just, I've just powered through seven emails already. Um, next is LinkedIn has accepted my thing. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, Lyft is a thing that I should unsubscribe to and stop getting um, spammed by. Hey, Kim, thank you so much for inviting me today. OK, now here's an email about today from Kim organizing me to be here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press, uh, I need a reply to this and thank her for having me along, right? And I can't do that right now because, you know, awkward. So what I'll do is thanks to this little app is I'm going to snooze it, OK? So I can't action it right now, but I, so I don't want it in my inbox. I want to do a step four. And so I click this little button, and I'm like, I want to get rid of this email, but I want it to come back, because I really need to reply to this to go, you know, that was great. That was so much fun. So I can do later today, which is a random number. I think it's about two hours. This evening, which is 6 o'clock exactly. Tomorrow, which is 8 AM tomorrow morning. This weekend, like, remind me on Saturday. Personal life, push it forward. Next week, it's work-related. It's just, I'm in week 13. G give me a break. Um, in a month, I, you know, I love this one. <laughs> I'm not going to do that to Kim, but like, the, uh, maybe I'll try and use that today. Um, mobile, I'm on, my, I'm on the go, and maybe I'll flick it to my mobile, and I'll keep reading it in my mobile. Um, and then pick a date, that's really good. I actually snoozed this email to this morning. So while we've been talking about this for a long time, I snoozed it to this morning so it'd be in my inbox as, as a to-do list item. So if I forgot where the room was or, or something like that. This is really amazing, and I'm going to go this evening, right? I'm not going to get a chance to do this until this evening. Boom, and it's, and it's straight out of my inbox. Uh, Bitbucket, doesn't matter. Um, Apple Jobs, hey, got a job. Um, Jed accepted my thing, cool. I'm quite active on LinkedIn, so we'll talk about that in a tick. Um, hey, something, okay, this is super important, but probably a this evening thing. I'll sort out when I need to do it then. Um, thanks for your feedback, something, something, Google something, something. I actually don't know, so I'll defer it till I'll have a few things to do tonight. Recommendations, don't care. Product hunt, don't care. Tweet. Okay. Um, here's a tweet that I, of a link that I wanted to watch. It's a 40-minute training video on something that I thought would be pretty cool. So what I'm going to do um, is snooze that, but I'm going to snooze that for the weekend. It's week 13, I'm pretty stressed. I'll, I'll watch that video in the comfort of my own home on the weekend. Um, iTunes, I've got an app in the App Store awaiting approval. That's cool, don't care. Hey, thanks so much, we'll talk about that later. Hey, two slides, I need to snooze that for later today. Video opportunity, that's later. Um, that's uh, this weekend thing. Sorry, I'm going to stop reading out all of my emails. Uh, snooze that to the weekend. Uh, so that's a draft that I need to get done tonight. Uh, hiring equipment, that is a tomorrow thing. 
Sky Awards, that's also a tomorrow thing. And the logos, I think, are a tomorrow thing. So there is nothing I'm supposed to be doing right now except talk to you. And that is what my inbox should look like after this. So as you can see on all of my accounts, I, I, personal university, I actually work here as a past leader um, and as a software developer. So I've got like work emails and, and then just Griffith Sciences gracing me with their notifications. And I have 19 that I have to do later. And who knows when they're later, I've scheduled, I promised myself that I'll look at it tonight. Um, some of those you saw that I was like, oh, I don't even know right now. So I'm going to just defer it till tonight because I know once I get home at six o'clock, I can start to delegate proper times for these things to happen. And then every now and again, it'll just pop, up, it'll pop in with a new email and I've got to action it right there. And, uh, and you saw me using keyboard shortcuts, but this is gorgeous on a phone to just sort of swipe through, get rid of it, get rid of it. Okay, I've got no emails and move on. So that was a demo of, of Mailbox. And that was really supposed to be a demo of the five steps. So to be able to delete and then delegate. I didn't delegate any of those things because they are all my responsibility. Um, the next one was respond. So none of those I had to respond to, but I know I have to get one of them out of my inbox. Um, then, then just defer. I deferred all of them because none of them I was going to do right now. Is that cool? Right? And now I have this weight off my shoulder that my, my inbox is empty. I open it up and there is nothing that I need to be doing. So get back in the moment and do what you're supposed to be doing. Okay. So just to sum up, inbox zero is your inbox is a to-do list that you aim to empty. Is that cool? I will get question and answer time at the end, but I really wanted to power through the, this next slide and then we can have some fun. Okay. So let's move on to the next one, which is social networks. So uh, who here has a Facebook account? Cool. Uh, show of hands for LinkedIn. Hey, do you use it? Yeah? Oh, cool. Yeah, of course you do. Um, uh, does anyone have a Twitter account? Cool. Um, does anyone have a Google Plus account? Hey, cool. Yeah, not gnarly. Um, all right. For me, I wanted to define uh, social networks. Um, being in technology, I have a really optimistic view of what they're all about, and I wanted to describe that to you. It's about who you are and who you know. These are two things you want to ask yourself. Does this display who I am, and does this display who I know? So um, some social network platforms do one better than the other and vice versa, um, and I want you to, to ask yourselves about these next couple of social networks. So next, who doesn't have a LinkedIn? Excellent, cool. Um, LinkedIn is, as I see it, a CV done right. Okay? If, if everything wrong with a CV, let's, let's get started. It's only a page or two, or should it be five? It doesn't have your face, so because that's unprofessional. It doesn't have any proof that you did any of those things. It doesn't have any endorsements, and if it does, how often are they updated? Um, it's, it's, it's static and it's cold and it has to be updated for you to be relevant. And in today's world, you update every minute. I've done an extra talk, that's got to go up somewhere, right? Um, I'm getting better and better at presenting and maybe you can endorse me on that. But LinkedIn is, is a way of showing who I am. I, can, I, I do online courses all the time, I pop that up there. Um, I'm doing presentations, so I add that to a thing that you can endorse on. And as, as I graduate in a, in a month, I'm just going to update this and not a CV. A CV, I feel like, is a formal thing of this, but really, if they wanted to know who I was, they'd go to my LinkedIn. And I believe it was part of a recruitment process that if uh, you get points deducted, if they don't notice that you've read their, um, their LinkedIn. So if I said, I'm interviewing you for a job, and I don't notice you in my, hey, these people have, noticed, have looked at your LinkedIn account, then you kind of lose points, because you're not ambitious enough. right? It's, it's a cheat, it's an easy way. Like, um, there, was, there was a few LinkedIn requests of people I'm going to work for. I've added the CEO of Atlassian, who's worth a billion dollars, and he added me back. I'm like, it, I think that's pretty cool. And that comes to the second thing of, no, of showing who you know. Um, I know Kim, Kim knows amazing people throughout the Griffith Honors College, and what a great um, uh, opportunity it was to meet some of the Sydney siders, so that when I go down there, I'm not alone. I find some other Griffith people. So LinkedIn is, the, is, is a CV that shows who you are, and it gets updated dynamically by linking to the people that, that are in your professional life. Um, one word of warning, try and only link with people that you know. 
Um, don't just link everyone and try and spam that network because they can. It can. It shows who you know. So if you start knowing people that have bad reputations, that that can spread pretty quickly. So um, link with people that you would endorse. Maybe I'll say. All right. The next one is Facebook. Um, who doesn't have a Facebook? One. Cool. All right. Um, Facebook not as critical, I don't think. But if I was employing someone, I'd go and look at their public profile. Um, I I would want to know what what type of person they are, or if they're locked everything down. Oh, okay. If they don't lock everything down, it's like oh, um, they're a party boy. Oh, uh, they're they're boring. Oh, like like um, you can tell a lot from from whatever they put on their Facebook. And hopefully, the person that you're being employed by is friendly and they'll friend friend you. But I just wanted to point out. What does this say about you? And what does this show who you know? So I'm friends with some people that worked in the um, Siri team over, over in Apple, um, because that's where I got a chance to work. And that just reflects nicely that I'm still connected to people around the world, amazing people, um, socially as well as just LinkedIn with my CD. So they're the two big ones. There are a bunch of others. Um, for me, in the tech world, um, Twitter is a big deal. Um, I want to blog about my opinions on things constantly coming out. And I want to share the, and I want to read the opinions of some of the best minds in the world. And they, for some reason, put it up on Twitter. Um, Google Plus is also a good tech haven. Um, YouTube, I do uh, talks like this, and hopefully, if the recording works, I'm going to try and put that up there, um, just to showcase who I am. Um, and then people can start following me, and that that builds a following, and I can talk with and connect with those people, and that that showcases my talent far more than a CV ever will. And then finally, e-portfolios is a really topical topic. Um, I wanted to show you, huh, I've got a, sorry, we're going to get in, yeah, defer, like, real soon. Okay. Um, I wanted to show my ePortfolio. This is a website that I built back in my first year of uni. Um, it just, let me refresh so you get the snazzy animation. Oh, doing live demos was never a smart thing. But as you can see, it's, uh, it's my name, it's a, it's a catch line of who I think I am, and then it's links to all the other ways that you can find out who I am. I don't put a lot of maintenance into it. I haven't updated it since last year. I do have the resume if they're, if they're a bit old school and they need to print off PDFs. But you can find out who I am through photos, through code that I've written, and uh, through my LinkedIn, of course. So um, it's kind of snazzy. It has like little animations. And if I click on stuff, it tells you who I really am. But that's for the, the people to find out as well. So. Um, and I just thought as an activity, maybe I'll go into Facebook and maybe, oh, not allowed to see who I am. All right. Um, so let's go have a look at my LinkedIn, see if that works. Live demos, should never do them. Oh, you should log in to make the most of your live account. Yeah, great. Um, let's go to uh, LinkedIn. Slash in slash RJ Chatfield. You should always test your links out before you visit. Okay, cool. All right, so it tells you who I am. It shows a picture, and it's constantly updated by people I know endorsing me for things they think I'm I'm kind of good at. Um, it also tells you people that I know, other software developers. So it really paints a picture that I'm connected to the industry, and I think that's really important. Does this portray who I am? So let's get back to this. All right, so there's, there's lots of ways you can connect with other people. I just typed in LinkedIn um, RJ Chatfield. Um, I have an obsession about this. I think this is good branding, that if you have a Twitter account, I'm RJ Chatfield. If you have Facebook, I'm RJ Chatfield. If I'm whatever Gist is, whatever Bitbucket is, I'm RJ Chatfield. It's a good branding exercise. And if you can spot my favorite in that list, uh, the last one I wasn't allowed to change, uh, which grinds my gears. So if you Google RJ Chatfield and you've met me at a conference or something because I'm wildly famous, you should be able to contact me on all of these things, whatever your favorite way of contacting me, even my email address. Right? So that's, that's really valuable for me, and maybe you should consider that yourself to, to get that branding and awareness. If my employer is looking at my Twitter and I don't tweet, that's kind of a pity, I lost points. If they look at my LinkedIn but I'm a Twitter guy, I could lost points. Um, and if they're looking at my code or something, I think it's valuable to have that, that consistent branding. So that's social networks. If you have any social presence, make sure it's displaying who you really are and who you know. And if you don't like how it 
betrays you or you don't, uh, in either respect, make sure you monitor and update that. <sighs> okay, this is the fun bit. So, thank you for s sitting through a whole bunch of stuff. Who has any questions or debate or about what I've, what I've said today? Yes? How, what would be like the smallest thing you would put on LinkedIn? Because it seems that it's just going to add clutter if you start adding every talk, every yep. you know, event that you do. And it, can also, it seems like it would be more of a distraction than anything that's really important. Does anyone have a good answer for that? I do. Um, it, it, some people believe that e-portfolios are the place where you put like, wow, two, three projects you've worked on and your best companies and that's like in one slide, like everything about you. Do you want to know more? I find that LinkedIn is, uh, I do spam it a bit. Um, if, you're, if you even got to that page and you're, you're, you're rolling your eyes because it's a bit spammy, then who are you? Like, uh, I think it's valuable to put what you think is valuable to your career there. So uh, I'm a bit spammy there. Um, but you can scroll past it. Um, I think everyone that's going to be looking at it will. Um, and if and if you get to age uh, sixty and you've just put like whatever uh, twenty years of forty years of, of um, stuff into your LinkedIn, then maybe you could cull out things that are no longer important to your career. Um, but I, at this point in my life, I've been spamming it and just every single online course, everything that shows that I'm uh, um, uh, ambitious and such, uh, and trying to learn more. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Uh, do you disagree? Like, is there, is there anything you read something else? Uh, it would make sense. The only way I can think of this is you use it as a contrast to your resume with some more the precise headlines of your career. Right. But I wouldn't know how you could make sure that they use both as an aid to. I'd, I'd probably put it in, that's a good contrast. Maybe the CV should be more concise, but then the LinkedIn is everything. There's everything everyone thinks of you and, and, and professionally what you've done recently that applies. But maybe that's a nice contrast. But how do you guarantee they do both? You've got to be on all of those platforms to make sure you capture wherever they're looking. Uh, maybe they look at your CV and your Facebook and you put all this effort into your LinkedIn. Um, that's an interesting thought. Um, anything else? And, and we did talk about Inbox Zero. Are there any questions about that either? Yes? Not exactly about Inbox Zero, but how do you apply, like, do you apply that Absolutely. Um, it, uh, it, as, as I've been at um, uni, I've really relied on my inbox a lot more. Um, because sometimes you can have your own to-do list system, and then it falls by the wayside. Yeah. Has anyone got a, a, an app or a piece of paper that they've written on, and like a goal list, and they never really came back to it to keep them knocking things off? But my inbox is persistent. If I don't keep that managed, it's like the end of the portal. So, um, so I, I do use this. Um, one app I used, which is super expensive but awesome, was um, OmniFocus. OmniFocus, since you've got a Mac, I'd recommend it. it. It is a bit more expensive, but it has that whole idea of deferring down pat. And I, wouldn't, I would never part with money unless it had that fourth step. I, don't, I can't do everything. Like, I have a goal list of I want to I wanna buy a house, but then I snooze it till like, next year, because, God, I don't have enough money. Uh, like, and, and there are things on my, on my to-do list that I just pump into my inbox as a to-do list. I have an inbox. And then I filter those out to say, what am I going to do now? And when am I going to start those things that I promised myself I would do? And maybe that's a tonight thing, maybe that's a next year thing, maybe that's a someday button, I don't know. So OmniFocus has been really good up until now. Uh, did you have your... Um, so with the inbox, sometimes like, I, some people send me articles or something and I read it, and then like, maybe at a future day I don't want to read it again. I don't know when. Great, great. Um, oh, I don't have any emails. Oh. Um, let's, let's have a bit of a play. In mailbox. Where is she? All right. Um, so let's let's put her back in my mailbox. Okay. So I've got this this video link, right? And and maybe it's something I'm going to read. Oh no! I had my. Let's get rid of that. I had my. Oh, undo. Uh, I had a link from myself. Where was that? Note to self, right? This is a video I want to watch, right? Um, I didn't show you all these buttons. Can you imagine what a tick is? Sorry, which, which step is uh, the tick? Ah, done, done. So it's actually the first step. Uh, so once you do what you're doing, it doesn't, there's no actual button for that. And then you go back to number one and do it. So you just tick it off as being done. Same as cross, but I never use cross. The middle one is just put it in your inbox. The next one is snooze. And that first one is actually a really cool one that you're just alluding to now. So it's, it's not necessarily proactively coming back to annoy you about when you should do it. 
but you can put it in a to watch, to buy, to read list. Um, this is kind of like folders done right. Some people have so many folders about stuff and, and I think it's just, if you can search for it in a few characters, then that's, that's awesome. And then if you can file it away like this, where there's no logical order to why they're all related, um, I think that's pretty cool as well. So, um, yeah, by all means, put it in folders if, if that suits your system. Oh, that's cool. Uh, all right. Any questions up the back? Considering you didn't have social networks, how, how is like? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so they're working on it. Um, so the beta means that they, they released an iPhone uh, app and they had invites only. And then I was like, cool. As, as similar to what Google Inbox is having. Um, then they released an Android version, so for those who have Android. Um, and then they released a Mac beta because they had so much demand for people having those same features on their desktop. Um, coming with Google, they're going to have a beta of their Inbox program. And I believe it will be cross-platform everywhere, So, um, which is pretty exciting. So if you don't... If you have a PC, you don't have Mailbox, which is kind of a bugger. Um, but you can do four of the five um, out of your inbox if you want to. And just use the Mail app on your phone, Mailbox app in your phone if you want to keep hacking to it. Cool. So no, they don't have a stable release as yet, but they're working on it. So. Um, Uh, excitingly different. Um, if, if you do want to know more, I, I didn't put slides into it here, but um, there is a big push for it. I think it's like you email inbox at google.com and they send you back an email, thanks for getting in the queue. Um, you can watch YouTube videos demoing how it works, but it's gorgeous. Like it's, 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 it's a lot of work that they, they, they understand your emails, but they shouldn't just be list items. If there's flight itinerary, it just should say, this is your flight booking. If you want to add it to your calendar. It's not a, not a click and then you read it and then you understand it and then you add it to calendars by highlighting and pasting. It just automates all that process, which I think is amazing. Um, but, you know, it's early, so maybe I'm pushing it down. It might, not, it might come out, it might be really bad. But uh, I, I think it looks, it's got lots of potential. Um, and another thing about if email, I have email, so if it's important, they'll take the time. Um, I, I'm not that, not that way inclined. I think if they have taken the time to contact me on any platform, I should pay them the respect of being there for them. Um, so if I have audience like you, none of you all have the same platforms except for probably email. Um, if you just want to follow me on Facebook, by all means, befriend me. Um, I think LinkedIn, we're all Griffith students and you're all trying hard and you're all Griff uh, Golden Key members. Um, I might click on the next one. Connect with me, by all means. I think it's no mistake that I got a chance to stand in front of some Golden Key members and, and, and introduce myself and show some pretty cool stuff. Um, it's not the end. I, I always do these sorts of talks wherever I can, and I'm going to go work for a company that values training as well. So um, if you're on any of these, I want you to be able to connect with me. And if it's email, send me an email saying, hey, Rob, hey, pen pal. <laughs> um, tell me, a, a, a copy and paste your Facebook up here. <laughs> um, so I know where you uh, yeah, so uh, I just think it's, it's, it's my responsibility to be approachable, um, and uh, kind of like with all communication, really, it's half my responsibility as, as well as the person that I'm working for. Um, was there anything else uh, that I can answer? How am I going to be time as well? Yeah, it's quite fast. So you take well, uh, I'm one of those guys who just keeps playing the name, and I made the name up. But um, I'm wondering though if you're going to get rid of them, right? Yeah. If I'm going to get rid of them. Uh, and I want to get back to something that I didn't necessarily uh, have to, to do, or like I delegated it. Yeah. And then I want to start a follow up because I, I don't know if you received it or it was maybe he, he, he didn't uh, go back to it. How yeah. do I get back to that? I so I did do this and I'm just doing it. Does everyone get the context? You, uh, and I'm going to sort of paraphrase that with the situation I have. Yeah. Um, I have a presentation that I, we've been talking about. And it got resolved. Like there was like a week ago or two weeks ago, we, we kind of came to the, you have to be here. So what I did is, is then I deferred it to today. So there's like another point in history that I can follow up. So if it's really urgent, I could snooze it by a, um, like one day. Like I've kind of actioned it. It's not my responsibility anymore. So get it out of my, it's not, it's deferred in my brain. But if I haven't got a reply by tomorrow, it should come back into my inbox. So, so let, me, let me show you that. Um, so, oh, and, and everything that I've sort of done, um, 
Okay, so, so here's, a, here's an email from uh, crowd participation. You all have my email address. I'm surprised I didn't get it, it, it didn't get spammed. Um, so if I wanted to, oh, this is this is a little bit weird. But um, when you've replied to something, it doesn't automatically disappear. So you can just snooze it to an hour later. To right now, I need my inbox to be zero, or like today, I need my this morning. I've got a lot on my plate, and I don't want to glance over and realize there's there's one thing. Like it's stressing me out that there's two things. Right? Why, do, why am I talking to you when there's two things? Like, I want this to be empty so I can be back in the moment. Um, it's just how I work, and if I saw your inboxes, I'd probably implode. Um, <laughs> please don't, I'm in week 13. Um, so, so I don't know what to do with this email. Um, everything that I've done, like if I get rid of that, and I can't get rid of that, so I'll go to this evening. Um, Kim. Right, if I type, uh, let's narrow it down so that all the other Kims in my life don't pop up. Um, if I just type in Kim, it, it looks at all my snoozed messages, it looks at all my done messages. Like, it's not like they're gone, they're, they're archived as such. And if I was on my phone because I'm coming here and there's nothing in my inbox but I forgot which room I'm in, I can always search for everything I needed. Um, I can also search for golden key, I could search for people that received the email. If I know that a friend of mine also got it, then, then I could look for his name and, and find it as well. Did that yesterday. Um, and then if I needed to, I can choose that email and maybe it was a mistake and I can move that back into my inbox. And so when I stop searching for it, it's there. So I can, I can move them around and drag and drop them as, as you see fit. But, um, but everything is always there in archive. So, and this is, uh, yeah, archive. So there's it's all my emails that I get. So yeah, don't read my emails too much. Yeah, does that answer your question? So you, so you don't, so you never lose something, and if you wake up in the morning and you're like, oh, I didn't follow up with something, you can always search for it and bring it back up and reply, hey, did you, why didn't you get back to me? If it's like, I want a report by Friday, you can like send them the report, and then it's no longer your responsibility, but defer it, like, so it disappears out of your inbox, it's not your job, but then let it come back on Friday and, say, and follow up with it if they haven't got back to you. And if they have, step number one, Yeah. With the current uh, billing system, I use Gmail. See? That, that wouldn't that would, um, work. It wouldn't work like that. I have to use the. Oh, this is sorry. This is that's a very good point. Um, this works with Gmail, um, and pretty much only works with Gmail. So if you have a Griffith account, um, I work for a company called. I'm going to work for a company called Atlassian. They use G uh, Google and uh, any personal Gmail account, as well as if you have an iCloud account, it also works with that. So um, if uh, and they're, they're trying to extend that more and more, but it's it's very complicated feature set. So yes, this this is reading in uh, this is reading in my university emails, my personal Gmails, and some iCloud accounts that I used to have when I was from Apple. Um, and and it's it's archiving, it's snoozing, it's doing all that integration amazingly without affecting like the way the accounts work. So if you don't have it on your Mac, but you use it on your phone, that's fine. If you only use it on your computer, but you don't, because you have a Windows phone or you have a, an old phone that has a numpad still, um, it's still fine. It will still work. Um, and if I checked my inbox here on this computer, it would, have, it would be empty. Right? I'd log in to one at a time in the browser, but it would still be empty. It maps perfectly. That's, that, that's, a, that's a good point. Any other questions? Super duper. Well, thank you very much for having me, and uh, and I, now we've got some food and such to enjoy. Yeah, we get lunch because you keep your money. Yeah, oh, yeah, sweet. Ask me more questions. And then I think this is where I go. All right.